Hello everyone. Today we are going to be looking at a standard duty stainless steel grade 2 commercial cylindrical classroom function doorknob. The first thing that you notice about this doorknob is its weight. The stainless steel and brass components make it a pretty heavy doorknob. The instructions are well written and comprehensive. It even includes a cutoff template that specifies the back set and borehole dimensions. And here's detailed mortising instructions as well as the cylinder reassembly drawing. I'm going to show you how to disassemble the doorknob and reassemble it. This way we'll be familiar with the components and how they work. The first thing that we're going to do is to remove the non-keyed knob. Locate the knob retaining pin hole, then use the included tool to push the spring-loaded pin down and then pull off the knob. Next, turn the door knob rosette counterclockwise to unscrew it off of the door set assembly. Note the retainer plate behind the rosette. It has two holes in it that you will use with the two included machine screws to clamp the lock set into the door bore during the actual installation. Next we are going to remove the key side door knob and before we do that we have to make sure that the key is inserted. Locate the door knob retaining pin access hole and use the included tool to depress the spring loaded door knob retaining pin However, make sure that you turn the key 45 degrees. Now, pull the knob off of the stem assembly. The fit between the doorknob and the stem assembly can be a little bit tight, so just wiggle it and pull firmly and it should come off. Next we are going to remove the key side doorknob rosette and we do this the same way we did the other side by spinning it counterclockwise. Removing the doorknob rosette exposes key side door knob assembly stem. And here's a look at our doorknob set with both doorknobs removed. Hopefully we can get it all back together again. So let's get started. We'll just go in the reverse procedure of the disassembly. Let's begin by screwing the rosette for the key side doorknob back into position. Next, let's reinstall the knob by first lining up the doorknob retaining pin slot with the doorknob's retaining pin access hole on the rosette. <coughs> you will need the included tool to insert the doorknob all the way in. Once again you have to maneuver the key at 45 degrees and then the knob will snap into place. Next, let's reinstall the non-key side retaining plate and rosette. The rosette screws back on the same way that we did the key side. The knob has a retaining pin slot as well as a protuberance on the opposite side that slides down the slot on the stem. Line these up and then force the knob onto the stem. Now that happened a little too quickly so I'm going to remove the knob once again and try to do it slowly so that you can see exactly how the knob goes back on. Okay, it's all back together. 
But now let's go to the latch assembly and I'll show you how it should be installed. Notice how the latch unit has a pair of hooked flaps on either side of it. Align these flaps with the spring-loaded metal T into the slots on the doorknob cylinder. Imagine, if you will, that the doorknob set is installed. And let's turn the handle to actuate the latch unit. Here you can see that the latch unit, when the knob is turned, is functioning correctly. I am going to remove the latching unit so that you can see how it should align with your new strike plate. As you can see, the strike plate mates with the latching unit and there is enough room in the strike plate cutout for the latching unit to fit comfortably with adjustment. This concludes my demonstration of the Transatlantic DL-SVB series knob set. I hope that you found it informative and helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next demonstration.